This video shows a freehand sketching of a full section view. A section view looks inside an object. Look at this rock. What is inside? You're not going to know it until you cut it by half, right? You can see the inside, the shape, you can see the material. So section views are used to clarify the interior construction of a part that cannot be clearly described by hidden lines in exterior views. By taking an imaginary cut through the object and removing a portion, the inside features may be seen more clearly. So here is we're going to use uh, the letters to label the visible surfaces in the given orthographic projection. We're going to follow the given orthographic projection to draw the isometric view, and then we're going to draw the regular right, right side view. From there, we're going to convert the regular right side view to the full section view. Use the line and the surface relationship. We can see surface A, B, C in the front view. They appear as horizontal edges in the top. Surface E and F, they appear as a horizontal edge and an arc in the front view. Surface D is a horizontal line in the top view as well. Count the units to determine the dimension. The dimension will help to draw the glass box in the isometric view. The width is a 6. The height is a 6. The depth is 5. Start to draw the glass box. Since the surface A and B are the front surfaces, we can measure the width and the height to draw the true size of surfaces in the isometric view first. Label the surfaces by A and B. Continue to draw the surface E right on the top. Surface E is an U-shaped surface. Measure the width, measure the depth. Carefully draw the true size of surface E in the isometric view. Surface C is pushed in from surface A and B by two units. So starting from the two units behind to draw the surface C. Remember in the isometric view, you only need to show the visible lines. To draw the surface D, which involve an arc right on the top, you have to define the center point. Where is that located? From the center point, we can see the radiance of the arc in the isometric view. By defining the radiance of an arc, we can start to draw the square box in the isometric view. The square box helps to draw the ellipse. The circle will become ellipse in the isometric view. Always use the center point to define the ellipse 
in the isometric view. Two units behind from the center point located, we can continue to define the radiance of an arc right on the back. From the radiance, we can define the square box on the back. From the square box, we can draw the ellipse. The arcs are parallel. They will never be merged. You have to use a tangent line to connect the two arcs, one right in front, one on the back. Darken the lines, erase any extra lines after the work. To draw the hole, we use the same strategy from the center point to define the radiance of the circle in the isometric view. From the radiance, to draw the square box. From the square box, to draw the ellipse. So the circle will become ellipse in the isometric view. Because the depth of the hole is two units, this time, the ellipse on the back side will not intersect with the ellipse right in front. So this visible ellipse is the only visible lines you can see the hole in the isometric view. At this moment, we finished the isometric view. We are going to use the finished isometric view to complete the missing right side view. Remember, to the right side view, you have to show all kinds of the lines, including the visible line, hidden lines, and center line. Make sure your front view and the right side view are aligned horizontally. Carefully measure the height, measure the depth. Now we are ready to generate the full section view. We use the acronym CVS to help remember the procedure. C is the cutting plane line. V is the visible line. S means section lines. So first, we're going to draw this imaginary cutting plane line. This is the one used to show the interior feature of the object. So imagine you're going to have a cutting plane, cutting plane vertically cut through the object. So you can have the right side portion removed. You are standing from the right side to see this object. So the cutting plane will be projected to be a cutting plane line, shows as an edge view. This cutting plane line can be added to the front view or the top view. In our case, we add it to the front. Pay attention to the arrow direction, which shows the direction of the view. In our case, it goes to the left. After the cutting plane line, we are going to convert the hidden lines to be the visible lines, because right now the hidden features are visible. After that, we're going to consider the section lines. Make sure the section lines added 
at the place where the cutting plane touches the solid surface. Different materials have the different material pattern. By default, you can always assume you have the cast iron, iron, unless it is specified. Remember, no surface touching, no section lines. This concludes the completion of the full section view.